Hey, I'm Pascal from Mars Pixel, and welcome to a new video. Um, this first week of the year has been somewhat chaotic for me, and I haven't really prepared anything for this official first video of the year. Last week's video was, of course, recorded before the new year, and it was an obvious video. I talk about all the stuff I'm going to be working on, but this week I have not prepared anything. Um, luckily, yesterday I recorded a session where I was creating a level for Regulated City. So um, I think there's a couple of interesting things I can talk about and make that into an interesting video, hopefully. The first question would be, why did I create my own editor? Why not use a existing editor? Stuff like that. So after the intro, we're gonna create a level for Regulated City and I'll give you some information on, uh, on some stuff that pops up, I hope. I'm gonna wing it. I'm just gonna watch this stuff being made alongside you and then uh, hopefully, there's words coming out of my mouth explaining stuff and things. Oh boy, this is gonna be uh, terrifying. Here we go. Okay, so uh, here we go. Let me uh, mute my screen. Um, I've recorded all this edited stuff, so I'm, this video is the size it's gonna be. Um, my own level editor for Regulated City, uh, why? That's gonna be the first question or people already asked that question. Pretty much because I already had a good editor built into my other games and um, I need a lot of special uh, specific stuff for this game that you can't really do in a gener generic or standard editing screen. This is going well. You can't do those type of things in a normal program, you have to maybe some of them have plugins i don't know but then you have to write stuff like that so uh, for me this was a lot easier i also already have all the graphics on the game all the features that the game has it's all built into this editor and that or actually the editor is built into the game so i can also quickly test these levels which i will be doing in a minute um so uh yeah let's just what am i doing here i'm i'm designing the layout and this is usually where i start for my levels um, designing the layout, the flow of the level. Um, I have in my mind a sort of idea of what I want and this is going to be for a bank level. So this level will only be used in uh, banks, sitting city banks, um, buildings that are somewhat related to banks, I guess. So we're going to have to place a vault and maybe some uh, a foyer or whatever you want to call that hallway thingy and uh, I have some stuff in my mind, but not a lot. So I just create a sort of flow of the level and then I start placing stuff into these areas. Um, the little funny tricky thing here is that all these items, they look good and they fill up an area, but they're also very important for the AI. Um, the squad members that uh, are moving around will actually use items to find safe spots. So if there is a full empty room, they honestly have no idea what to do uh, and adding a lot of items to a level not too much because then you're going to block these ai members but uh, if you add a lot of stuff there they can navigate from thing to thing and have safe spots around it and everything so um, items are besides being just nice dressing they are also very functional in the game Now this can still get some improvement in the level editor. Right now you can uh, select certain categories of objects, but then you have to scroll through them one by one to find the one you need. And it would be probably easier if I have a big pop-up screen just showing all the items and you can select one. So I might add that to the level editor. Um, the editor is also built into the game and it's probably most likely will be released alongside the game on PC so that you can create your own levels or tweak them or change them. So um, it's a lot of fun playing with it uh, and you just kind of start with an empty, empty, empty area and then hopefully you, you turn it into a nice level. That's usually how I do it. I don't go in with a plan, just a general idea of what I want to create and how it should flow. And then I do some playtest sessions and I, in existing levels I already moved rooms from one place to another uh, just because the flow wasn't right. or. You can add things like uh, disabling the power or security cameras 
all those things you want them in the right order you want them in the right location so that the player really has to either uh, move towards it or move away from it and really make decisions while they are playing so um, it's a lot of fun figuring out good levels here we place lamps on top of tables and things uh, the editor will know that there's already an object there so the next object will be placed on top of it uh, lights will automatically light up an area uh, you don't see that in the level editor but trust me that will happen once we start play testing it and then it's just a matter of uh, placing interesting items there and make it look like something that could be a bank in this case and we place a bunch of NPCs, just characters that right now don't really have a function, but we just want a bank to have people in there. And then of course, a bunch of bad guys. These are just spawning spots for the bad guys because in an early stage or early phase of the game, there will be maybe like 1% of these guys will actually spawn. But later in the game, there will be more enemy spawning. So you have a lot of spawn places, but only a few will be used at the start of the game. And eventually all these spawning spots will be used because there's a lot more enemy spawning. That's a lot of use of the word spawn, by the way. There's still some stuff in the editor that isn't really user friendly. Uh, right now, this area we're gonna be building is for uh, the start of the game, which also needs a door. And this door is a bit tricky because uh, this door is gonna be used as the entry point, the, the closest door to the player spawning spot which isn't really uh, a great way of doing it. I think, we sh I, think I should probably create a certain uh, tile that is a really specific starting spot door or something like that. So that uh, because the engine, I had levels made where there was another door closer to the player start point than the door I thought would be uh, the player starting point. So then it really uh, messes up the level completely. So it's probably best that the level, the person editing the level specifies uh, what the entry point is because then you can also do more flexible stuff with where the player starts. Now here we do a little playtest session, just see how the flow goes, how, how it moves. I actually sped up the game, at, at, with, it's now at 200% normal speed, so uh, it's double the speed it just should be, but um, else the video would be very long. And as you can see, there are lights being shown. And um, even though you place a certain table, there's usually a couple of alternate versions of that table. So it might still look a little bit different when you actually play the level, but I just like procedural and random stuff happening in my games so that every time you play it, it's a little bit different. So uh, certain uh, cabinets, certain tables or chairs or sofas, they're all usually have different alternate versions. And you don't really know which one will spawn, but it doesn't really matter because you just want a cabinet there or a table. It doesn't matter which table it's going to be. And a shout out to DMAC who created a lot of these graphics when he was interning or in, had an internship at me, at Orange Pixel, at, not at me, but at Orange Pixel. <laughs> you see, I shouldn't do these live thingies it's not good it's not healthy i make too much mistakes or too many mistakes see i do it again anyway um let's just create more level stuff i'll i'll i'll, I'll grab a little bit of water and, and you just enter, entertain yourself so some items sorry i'm back Sorry, I'm back. Uh, some items like this uh, drink dispenser type thingy are actually functional in that the player can uh, smash them a little bit and there might be a soda can popping out, which gives you one health point back. Um, you can also see a couple of these cabinets on the right side of the hallway uh, being slightly off from the walls. Uh, you can flip things and that's what happened here, uh, but it should obviously be uh, positioned against the wall so i'm not sure if that is fixed in the game itself probably not because it uses the same rendering so that's a bug that i should fix and actually make sure stuff is nicely positioned against the wall here i decided i wanted to add a little bathroom because i like to hide security codes in bathroom areas in my game don't ask me why this is this goes way too deep but um yeah Security goats are can usually be found in a bathroom. <laughs> A 
And here we go for another playtest session. Uh, again, it's at double speed, but that shouldn't matter. The action is there. You can see what's happening. We found a key card. You can, as a level editor, place different locations for key cards, but the game will uh, decide which of these points it will use to actually spawn a key card. So let's say we need one to open a door. We can um, specify four or five spots around the level and the game engine will then just randomly pick one. So every time you play the game, that level might have its key card at a different location, which is more interesting for the player. It adds replay value and um, it just works a lot better. Of course, you do have to make sure those keys are placed in front of the door in the current uh, game flow. If you place them in an area that's not accessible beyond the door or that's only accessible beyond the door, then as an editor, you made a big mistake. And that's why we can play, play these levels uh, before we actually uh, release them. You might also notice that the floor has changed. This is something I'll get into probably in next week's video or something. But um, right now the floor is mostly flat colors, which gives a lot of clarity and, and just cleanness to the game screen as you're playing. And there's a lot of stuff going on with enemies and, and stuff flying around. And having that floor mostly just one color helps a lot. It also gives a certain um, cheerful look to the game, I think, especially with these colors. Uh, which counterbalances offsets, counter offsets or balances all the chaotic action with skulls flying around and blood spatters and things like that. Um, the only structure on the floor will be automatically generated by those items. So if you place a cabinet somewhere, the floor underneath that cabinet will have a little bit more structure um, and everything else will be flat. And this gives it, I just really love how this changed clarity to the game. So I guess I won't be talking about this next week because I just talked about it in this video. Moving back to some editing. Here we go um, for a final playtest session. I think we're almost at the end of this. Um, we can flip the level, which is also what the game engine will randomly do. But from the editor point, you can now also flip it. So we're now playing in a flipped version of the edit of the level we just designed, and this gives it a very different feeling. But uh, it should still work because everything is simply mirrored. But now we have a pretty uh, decent level. This is just going to be a first draft of the level. I'll play it a couple of times in game and I might change some stuff around or add some enemies or maybe move a certain room or item and um, we'll have to see how this level plays. I can still add bigger areas to it. I can still add more hallways, maybe some secret areas. But for now, it's a nice and interesting structure and we didn't have an actual bank level yet. So whenever you encountered a bank in the game, there would not be a level attached to it. I have the same problem with airfields. So uh, that's the next one I'm gonna be tackling, creating some sort of airfield like area, which is gonna be challenging, but interesting. So um, that's it, level done, level made. Um, there will be more levels being created for the game right now. Like this is the first bank and I can have like 16 different bank levels. And that means that every time you encounter a bank, there will be a one in 16 chance of running into this level but I have to create all those other levels as well. Sorry for the weird and chaotic video, I'm, I'm, although maybe you'll actually enjoy seeing videos like this. In that case, let me know. There are more levels to be made and I don't mind doing these videos because they're frankly uh, pretty easy to do. The reason I haven't prepared anything is because for Regulated City, I've been submitting it to a bunch of events, online events, um, not award-winning type things, but more events that will actually promote the game. So hopefully, uh, Having it shown in different areas will bump up those wishlist numbers and more interest in the game. Uh, for that, I need to make sure there's an up-to-date build uh, demo version and a video. So I actually have to uh, finish up some work on the game, create that new demo. Hopefully by the time this video goes live, I actually have that demo up and running on Steam. Just make sure in the description there's a link 
um, just check it out. It might still be the old demo of December the 2nd, but uh, with a little bit of luck, it's the new demo, hopefully. Um, I also have to create a video for it and then I'll be able to promote the game more and then also have stuff ready to see if I can find some funding for the game. So I've been, um, it's a chaotic week, but it's very busy already. The year just started and it's full into uh, work mode. But I'm glad you actually watched the video up to this point. Uh, so thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment below, uh, drop on the Discord and do all that stuff. And, and share the video uh, if you like the channel and want to see the channel grow. Share these videos wherever you can on other Discord servers or Reddit or whatever. Uh, it helps me a lot and it also allows me to keep making these videos. So that's just a win-win for everybody. All right. Thanks for watching, gonna edit this video and see you next week, bye.